Unfortunately, more of the same. It seems like it's a regular thing. Usually after an election, people want to be known and seen. So uh, not a lot of new, new stuff. The problem with these hearings are they appear to be problem-solving exercises, but they're really opportunities for people to make individual points. And that's really what happened today. But, but do you not think that there is more of a, a, a political impetus behind this issue at the moment than there has been for quite a long time on both sides of the aisle? So if we can't solve it now, are we going to solve it ever? Well, absolutely. There has been a lot of pressure and the industry already started to exercise a lot of self-discipline starting about 18 months ago. Uh, there is a lot of pressure now and most of the mainstream companies are being responsible. For example, what used to be two list prices in list price increases in a year have now become just one list price a year. And in fact, many companies are saying that their list prices only were up like four or five percent and the actual net prices after rebates and discounts were down versus prior year. So overall, inflation in drug prices is not the issue, especially when nine out of ten drugs are generic and there is really no issue there. I, you know, it's interesting because this wasn't the only hearing where health care became a topic of discussion. Even the fair, Fed chairman uh, weighed in on it and said that he sees the cost of health care delivery as something that's driving fiscal unsustainability. It's one thing to talk about list prices and talk to the drug makers themselves, but shouldn't we also be, and shouldn't lawmakers also be taking a much more crit critical lens to everybody else in the supply chain, including, for example, pharmacy benefit managers? I think we need to look at the whole ecosystem. Drugs are about 15 percent of the ecosystem. The cost per person in the U.S. is about 30 percent higher than the wealthier countries in Europe. And we do believe if we manage the system a lot better that we could find most of that 30 percent. But it's not necessarily just the drugs. There's a lot of other stuff that needs to be improved. Two major issues that politicians didn't talk about today that they should have been talking about. What are they doing to encourage prevention? Because 60 to 70 percent of the costs are chronic diseases that can be prevented in the first place. And the second thing is, what are they doing about litigation? Look at the outlier status of our country versus all the advanced countries on defensive medicines and litigation. So these were two things that they should have been talking about as well. Where, where, where do you stand in the balance of, of that fact that the U.S. should be able to make it more competitive, like cheaper markets in Europe, or on the other side, the fact that markets like Europe benefit uh, disproportionately from the innovation of U.S. pharma companies? There's no question that uh, wealthy countries, uh, in Northern Europe especially, should be paying their fair share, and they definitely get access to innovations that are coming from the U.S. Uh, sometimes they come a little later, but they do benefit. And in this regard, the U.S. Trade Representative should try to put some priority on this item. Uh, unfortunately, right now, there's so much uh, conversation going on around China and other sectors of the economy. But this is an American industry, essentially. This is truly an American industry. And I think the USTR should really treat it as such. It's really a pity that we still have a disparity in the ability to get the right reward for innovation from the northern European countries and from Japan.